let's look at uh, Bayes' theorem. One of uh, the important uh, revolutions in the world of uh, statistics. Even the basic Bayesian philosophy itself has revolutionized the concept of statistics. The reason being, here we are estimating a parameter. Right? In this case, we are estimating a parameter based on a random sample. And this parameter can very well be variable. It's not a fixed parameter. Right? It's a variable parameter. Whereas when we talk about uh, the typical classical statistics, there also we estimate the parameter. We estimate the parameter using the concept of maximum likelihood estimation. And in that case, the parameter is actually a fixed one. It's not a random variable. Whereas uh, the Bayesian mechanism simply says any parameter that we are estimating, that could still be a random variable. Though here the classical mechanism says it is fixed, it could be an unknown quantity, but it is fixed. It's not a random variable. Whereas the Bayesian philosophy simply says that any parameter that we are estimating could very well be a random variable, which means I can very well define the interval for this kind of a variable, for this kind of a parameter, but here I cannot define an interval, right? So basically it comes out that I have to work out very, very careful here without making much of, uh, 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 and I have to really work out on the data to a very drastic extent. Whereas here I can very well make a probability kind of statements even with respect to my parameters also. So that's where we see that the world of Bayesian statistics has created new waves in the world of uh, statistics and our understanding of the statistics uh, changed because of this Bayesian philosophy. Now, trying to understand the Bayes theorem. Okay, first of all, let's take a sample space, right? I'm taking a sample space of the various possibilities, out of which I'm calling B1, B2, B3, Bn as the different subsets of that sample space, means different possibilities of outcome. And here we are also making sure that the probability of occurrence of any one of them is definitely positive. It's not zero. Now, we are considering an event A. And even there we are making it like uh, the probability of the occurrence of A definitely is positive. Then what this Bayes theorem simply says is, the probability of any of these subsets, right, probability of any of these subsets given A is same as probability of occurrence of A given any of these subsets multiplied by the independent probability of each of these subsets divided by the probability of occurrence of the event A. And here we are simply uh, saying the probability of the event A in this case should be across all I's, across all the I's, we are talking about the probability of A given the I multiplied by probability of B I. So if this is the case, so this is basically kind of unconditional probability of occurrence of A. Now if you look at it uh, a little bit more detail, we see that P of A is the unconditional probability of occurrence of A. 
P of B is the unconditional occur probability of occurrence of Bi. And this is becoming a conditional probability of occurrence of A under the condition that Bi has already occurred. That is where it is turning around a conditional probability. Right, turn around a conditional probability. We are trying to find out the B given A probability in case we are knowing A given B kind of a probability. For example, let's take a simple example to uh, demonstrate all this stuff. Let's talk about three groups of people. Right, three groups of employees. One, management guys in a company. Two, uh, to the executive grade. And three, the unskilled grade. Let's say a company is having three different kinds of people. Let's say we have 30% of the people or probably the total 10% of the people are in management grade. 30% of the people are in the executive grade and 60% of the people are unskilled right and now here let's say so th that's one information that is there 10 percent of the people in a company are from management 30 percent are from uh, executive and 60 percent are from uh, uh, unskilled now what we have also seen is let's say 15% of the management is left-handed. 15% of the people in the management are left-handers. Whereas, 20% of the executives are left-handers. And 30% of the unskilled guys are left-handers. Right? So, in, in a probability form, how can I write the probability of management is 0.1. Probability of an executive is 0.3. Probability of uh, an unskilled worker is 0.6. Now 15% of the management guys are left-handers. Probability of left-hander given he is uh, from the management is 0.15. Probability of a left-hander, given he is an executive, is around 0.2. Probability of a left-hander, given he is unskilled, is around 0.3. Right? Now, what I really want to see is, let's say I have picked one left-handed person at random. Right, I have picked one left-handed person at random. I really want to find him. What is the probability that he belongs to the executive category? So, which means what I really want to find out is, given that the person is a left-hander, I want to find out what is the probability that he belongs to the executive category. This is where I can use the Bayes' theorem. Because what is the Bayes' theorem saying? This can be written as probability of a left-hander given executive multiplied by probability of being an, uh, being an executive divided by probability of being a left-hander. Right? Now, probability of a left-hander given an executive, we know that it is 0.2 multiplied by probability of executive we know it is 0.3 divided by probability of a left-hander this is where i am taking the total probability we have defined earlier p of l should get defined as the summation p of l given uh, m multiplied by p of m plus P of L given E multiplied by P of E 
plus p of l given u multiplied by p of u. This is what is the total probability rule. So in the denominator, it comes out as p of l given m is 0.15 times 0.1 plus 0.2 times 0.3 plus 0.3 times 0.6. So overall, it comes out as 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.015 plus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.18. Now, this is where I can uh, take 0 0.24 and 0 0.255. So it works out like 0 0.06 divided by 0.255. So this is what can uh, work out to be the probability. Now this is how we can typically uh, compute the probability of a uh, uh, left-hander given that uh, probability of an executive being a left-hander from the Bayes theorem wherein we are uh, trying to uh, take the reciprocal right from using probability of uh, L given E, we are able to compute the updated probability of the occurrence uh, of uh, the uh, of the person selected being an executive given he is a left-handed person. The same logic probably I can very well go ahead in terms of computing probability that he is in the management given he is left-handed which could uh, work out to 0 0.015 divided by 0 0.255. And probably if I'm going with probability of an unskilled worker, given he is left-handed, goes as 0 0.18 divided by 0 0.255. The moment we have framed this kind of a framework, solving any kind of an example becomes quite comfortable for us, right?